Hello again. We're taking care of hyperbolic graphs right now, otherwise known as hyperbolas. And basically it can come in two different ways. Like the ellipse comes in one different way, but depending on the book that you write or read, it could come in two different ways, but it's actually just one. For hyperbolas, it's actually two different types of equations. One where the x value goes first, and the other one where the y value goes first. And the main difference, let me just explain that right now, is if the x value goes first on a hyperbolic graph, then you have two parabolas that open up to the left and to the right in opposite directions. Like this. That's not an exact drawing, but I tried my best. If your y value goes first, then you have two parabolic functions that open in opposite directions that go up and down, like this one. It's basically the same uh, exact equation that both equal to 1, x and h go together, y and k go together, a goes with the first uh, term, b goes with the second term, etc. There are asymptotes to worry about here, and here are the asymptotes for each one. This is y minus k equals plus or minus b over a uh, times the quantity x minus h, and that goes with the first one. And the second one is almost identical except you reverse the b and the a. So this one, uh, well, switch the b and the a. So this is b over a, this one's a over b if the y goes first. Other than that, it's not really too shabby of a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and try this problem. And I think that you can do it, I hope you can, because I remember this is uh, probably the lesson that made me want to decide to become a teacher. And what happened was, uh, we had a, I had a particular teacher in school, and this person was absent. I think it was the only day they were absent. And on the day they were absent, they, we were supposed to learn this. The first day we got introduced to it, never, nobody ever saw it before in their life. And we had a substitute, and he tried his best to explain it, but at the end he looked at it and said, I can't do this, I'm not going to even pretend. Put the book down and said, you can start talking if you want to. So everybody just started talking. Well, not everybody, a couple of people tried, and I was one of the people that tried. And I figured it out because I just plotted points, etc. And I think, you know, I, I saw what was going on, and people were a little amazed by it. They said, how did you figure this out? And I said, I don't know. Can you go up there and teach it? I said, yeah, sure, why not? So I went up there and I taught it, and one of the students was saying, Whoa, this is the first time I understand anything in this class, which generated some laughter. And I thought, wow, maybe I'm pretty decent at this, actually. So kind of chosen as a career. All that good stuff, here's history. So we're going to try this problem. y squared over 16 minus x squared over 9 equals 1. And we're not going to worry about shifting the center. It doesn't have an h value and a k value other than 0 and 0. So it's actually going to be a pretty decent graph. So we're going to go ahead and try to graph this. Uh, like I said, though, the first value determines which way the parabola opens. If the x value is first, it opens side to side. If the y value is first, up and down. So without really doing much work whatsoever, this is kind of the way I approach it, too. Center is at 0, 0. Okay, for your y, it's 4. And it's just basically two parabolas. Go like this. But it's a hyperbola. Bang. Done. That's it. That's it? Yeah, pretty much. But there is uh, one other, well, two other things to keep into consideration. Here's what you want to do if you want to figure out the asymptotes of this graph. Okay. So it goes 4 on the y. It goes 3 on the x. Here's what I learned later on. This was something that I didn't actually get right away. I mean, I figured out the asymptotes, but I didn't see the trick here because nobody ever showed it. That's the one thing I didn't get. You draw yourself a nice little square like that. It makes life a little bit easier here, and I'll show you how it makes it easier. You start from your center and you have to connect to the corners of the square. Terror. And there you go. These two red lines determine where your asymptotes are. That's really all there is to it. So in this case, if you want to figure out what your asymptote is here, it's y equals, and then you just check the slope. It's 4 over, 3 across, so it's 4 thirds x. But this one is the opposite. It's 4 down, 3 across, so that's negative 4 thirds x. So all it is is plus or minus 4 thirds x. That's how you find your asymptotes. It will never go past this line, never go past this line, never go past this line, never go past this line. This is a poor representation right here. I tried my best, but I'm not an artiste. 
Yeah. So this is something called a slant asymptote. You have horizontal asymptotes, you have vertical asymptotes, and then you have asymptotes at a slant. And just by definition, it's just a linear equation. It doesn't have to be y equals x. It just has to be some sort of a coefficient in front of x that kind of, you know, but it's a slant. That's really all there is to it. Last thing to talk about is the foci. Now, if you remember uh, talking about the directrix and parabola and uh, the focus of a particular parabola, you'll know that the foci exist inside this uh, little parabola, not outside it. So I've got to figure out where it is. Well, there's actually a very simple way to figure it out. All you do is you take this number plus this number. That's it. You add them both together. It's actually the C value. You know, this is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then you square root if you want to think about that. But anyways, it's just a squared plus b squared. Uh, 16 plus 9 is 25. All you do is you just take the square root of it. That's it. You just add these up and take the square root. What happens if it's a decimal? Then it's a decimal. By the way, square root of 25 is 5. And negative 5. So your focus for this particular parabola is here. Your focus for this one is here. But if you want to be uh, talking about it correctly, your foci for the hyperbola exists there and there. Yeah, it was a lesson that got me into teaching. Woo! Yeah. I felt pretty big after that, but no, I'm just joking. But, you know, something that was okay. So, hopefully, you found that helpful, you know, because uh, technically that was my very first lesson ever. Okay, have a good day for now. Goodbye.